Staying overseas, let's go to Cuba, where there's a frantic search happening now for nearly 20 people missing after lightning sparks a massive fire from an oil storage tank. One person is dead and more than 120 are recovering. That fire quickly spread to a second tank nearby, forcing nearly 5,000 people working and living near that base to evacuate. NBC News reporter Ed Augustin joins us now live from Havana. At first, if you can, just bring us up to speed. What exactly do we know about the search and about what happened? In terms of the search, there's only been one person confirmed dead so far, um, 16 still uh, missing. And those missing are all confirmed to be firefighters. And I think it's safe to say the chances that they will be found are very slim, unfortunately. Why? I was there yesterday and I was speaking to a fire firefighter who, seconds before the blaze, was between the two tanks that subsequently exploded. Each of these tanks hold, can hold up to 300,000 barrels of oil. And he was trying to hose down one tank to keep it cool, to stop it from exploding. A fire started, as he recounted to me and as we know. The firemen in the vicinity started running. He got trapped in the hose that he was using to hose down the tank. And as the fire engine with his colleagues sped away, it was him holding on for sheer life and dragging, uh, being dragged across the ground for about 40, 50 meters that saved him. He was crying when I spoke to him, his colleagues, some of which were friends from school, he presumes are dead, and but yet he keeps he keeps on fighting. He keeps on fighting. I mean, that's a heartbreaking story. Ed. Uh, we also know that just when we look at the big picture here, that Cuba is facing a major energy crisis with severe fuel shortages and massive blackouts. So, what kind of impact overall does this fire have on on the energy system there? Well, this catastrophe couldn't have come at a worse time for Cuba. Uh, the island is broke. Um, and the locus of the crisis for the last few months have been huge, chronic, daily power cuts for millions of Cubans in the provinces. That's become a daily reality already. And there's a few reasons for that. One is that the war in Ukraine that the previous piece was reporting on has pushed up global prices for gas. So Cuba struggles to buy them with hardly any money it has. Uh, two is that U.S. sanctions, uh, which were put in place by the Trump administration, their so-called maximum pressure campaign, Many of them have been left in place by the Biden administration. And some of those sanctions specifically target, um, uh, sanction oil tankers bringing oil from Venezuela to Cuba. And I was speaking to oil experts this weekend, and they say, yeah, that, that raises costs. If you're, if you're a tanker company and you want to ship to Cuba, you're going to think twice about doing that. You're going to put a premium on it. Um, the other reason is it's very, very aged infrastructure. You know, 40, 45 years uh, old are most of these uh, factories and they just haven't had enough capital maintenance. So when you put all those things together and then you add this lightning strike right by the biggest yeah. um, power plant in Cuba, it's a, it's a ca catastrophic situation for everyday Cubans. Yeah, we appreciate you bringing it to us and explaining it's the nuance to us there. Ed Augustin Forrest, live in Havana. Ed, thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.